What's up everyone, my name's Wolfman and we are going to be discussing another GTA Online topic. That being, in my personal experience, what you should watch out for in the open world races and what to expect if you have not been on it or done them since they came out yesterday. <clears throat> uh, first off, I would like to say I apologise for any coughing that I may be in this video. I'm not exactly 100% great with the temperature in the UK at the moment. I always get kind of cold and cough this time of year, but I will power through it for you people. So, there is going to be some uh, gameplay in the background. It'll be my live stream from last night. My commentary will not completely <clears throat> be what is on the screen, but hopefully there will be some bits that you can see. But the first thing I will say, you probably noticed by the thumbnail, uh, it's not a stress-free racing series. We are going to say that. Uh, I'm going to honestly, my honest opinion, I'm going to say that I'm happy my mic was not plugged in of the live stream. Otherwise, you would have heard a very unhappy and frustrated me, um, mainly because of the type of races that you will encounter <coughs> on these races. Um, that is the first thing. Uh, you're going to get them people that know they're not going to be able to win, so they deliberately crash into other people to wreck their race. Um, my resolution to this would be, if I was designing the open wheel races, would be if, and it is possible, if you were to be a lap ahead of someone, like one or more laps ahead of someone, the person who is behind you lap wise should be ghosted slash passive mode so someone who is say three laps behind you purposely crashing into people can't interact with those ahead of him if you're on the same lap you can interact with one another bump into each other but if you're not on the same lap you shouldn't the person behind shouldn't be able to wreck the person in front's race it's not fair to be honest but that's my opinion on that <clears throat> uh, second is um, the health bars on the bottom right this is kind of linked with the hard soft and medium tires uh, I use soft tires because honestly the time it takes for them to degrade it's honestly not that fast so you can easily do a five lap race um, on soft tires without going into the pits I think I did a 10 lap race and I went depending on how you drive I just I was just about to start lap 10 of 10 before having to go into the pits um, you don't have to go into the pits straight away the moment you see it going down and on the tires my method is waiting until it shows up red until it shows up red you are fine uh, while the bar for the tire health is white you've got good grip um, but once it gets to red that doesn't mean they've popped or they're now wasted but the grip and the traction will be noticeably different once the bar is in red as soon as that bar goes down if you're on custom vehicle and you've got bulletproof tires you won't lose your tires but your tires will still be gone um, but you will have a little bit more control because you have tires non bulletproof tires the bar goes down to zero you've got nothing left on it the tires will pop and then essentially you are screwed <clears throat> if you're halfway around the track but you can respawn <coughs> excuse me you can respawn your car and get it repaired however this only repairs half of the tires and none of the actual vehicle health so if you've got half vehicle health it will not repair that it'll only do half the tires if you are have zero um, thirdly the bits you want to watch out for 
mainly of the wheel of the car are the tires probably third priority to be honest uh, because they take quite a while to degrade the first thing you are going to want to watch out for is that spoiler because the moment you lose that spoiler you will spin if you try and turn the wheel completely to go around a corner so you are forced to go slowly that is the first thing you want to watch out for and protect second is the front wing uh, if you lose the front wing yes the traction the, you still have the traction but you won't be able to turn as tight which means again you're gonna have to go slowly to get around the corners which is a waste in time um, <clears throat> so that is the three main things you want to keep out for watch out for anyway uh, any of the other body don't worry about it it doesn't really make a much of an effect but the spoiler the tires and the front wing are the three things you want to look out for in order of priorities spoiler front wing tires those are the three things you want to watch out for um, fourth related to the pit stops is obviously you've got to stand still and be stationary to have it do any kind of repairing your tires health will go up um, however if you're losing the front wing or the spoiler and you go into the pits you have to wait until the vehicle health is completely restored before you can go if you go before it's completely restored you won't get your wings or spoilers back it will do that up the health but it won't put the car back to normal how to tell if your car is completely restored there will be a puff of smoke and that is when you know that your car will be completely restored there is however a little brief second um, that you don't have to be stationary for there to be repair is when you're stopped and the moment you hit the trigger to or the whatever button it is you use to accelerate there is a very very brief moment where you can move and there's still repairing the vehicle while you're very slightly moving it's like it's not even like it's probably like less than one mile an hour so time it well I'd say if you're not too sure wait till that puff as soon as you see the puff of smoke boom go accelerate obviously there is a pit speed until you get out of the pits so you gotta wait for that to actually start getting full speed <clears throat> uh, fifth thing is the boost now this is a two-parter bit um, first part the boost does not work as like the rockets like the, the the rockets on cars you press the horn boom you, or whatever button you're away you're instantly like top speed the boost on these cars are not that if you are in a standstill and you use the boost all that's going to happen is you're going to wheel spin and accelerate to the top speed of the car that's it so my suggestion would be wait keep your boost keep it charging until you've got it filled wait until you're on a straight <clears throat> and then once you're going near it near enough the top speed that you can that you're comfortable with then do it then you're going to go higher than the top speed because if you just do it from a standstill like I said you're just going to accelerate to the top speed of the car and then you're going to be going no faster than anyone else so that's that also uh, sixth thing also about the boost uh, if you're slipstreaming uh, behind someone and you boost no if they boost while you're slipstreaming and then you're slipstreaming with the boost pray to god that you are on a straight bit of road because you will go from what i've experienced far above 200 miles an hour <coughs> because i can get it to 180 <coughs> in certain spots um but if you're slipstreaming someone who's boosting and you're boosting while in their slipstream you're gonna go flying so be a watch out for that um, seventh thing 
Um, pff, what is there? What have we done so far? Let's just have a little recap, shall we? Um, we've done the tyres. We've done the priorities of what to look out for. Other players, mainly. Um, ah, yes. Number seven. Learn the tracks. The quicker you learn these tracks, the quicker you're going to be able to find that line that works. Because if you're just racing around the tracks and not taking any of it in, you're not going to remember any of the racing lines. You're not going to be able to remember any of the quickest routes or how to brake. My favourite one is, I think, Height, Height of Society, I think it's called. Um, because there's a lot of downhills, hill bits. There's a lot of turns while going downhill at full speed. Not many people know how to do this. Um, and I did a race earlier today and I nearly lapped the person in second place. I was in first and I was nearly a lap ahead of the person who was in second. That's what I mean by learning these tracks. If you don't learn the tracks, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, <clears throat> which brings me on to number nine, I think. I think we're on number nine. Um, <clears throat> now this is kind of a racing technique that's been in the game for a while um, and I have not proven but I have experienced and used it and it works and it also works with this don't necessarily um, don't use the brake just let go of the accelerator slightly if it's a really tight like if it's a 180 degree turn use the brakes but if it's just a slight 190 turn use the don't use the brakes. Just let it slow down because if you just let go of the accelerator and it slows down on its own, it recharges the boost for you. And also with using the brake, that recharges the boost. So don't necessarily use the brake because all you're going to be doing is slowing down a bit too much, but then you've got to waste time accelerating up again, by which time two, maybe three other people have gone past you, especially if it's in a non-contact. Um, but along with that, number 10, trust the car. If you've got a custom car, mainly only because I haven't used the other one, the PR4, trust the car's traction. Don't worry about trying to brake to go around a tight corner, especially some of them, because it will keep the grip. So you don't have to, because normal stunt races go around corners at the speeds that we're going at in these F1 cars, you'd spin off. But the traction on these cars, you don't have to worry. Obviously, if you're a first time racer, you're going to be a little nervous. But trust me, the quicker you get to learn the car and the traction and be one with the car and the car be one with you, um, the quicker you're going to be getting around these tracks, <coughs> um, mainly because you don't want to waste time, basically, because everyone's going to be, main, most of these tracks involve turns and straights where you don't have to break, and if you're breaking to go around a corner because the, you're not sure the traction will be there, people are going to pass you. So get to learn the tracks, get to trust the car, learn the traction, and you will be fine. Um, but those are my main experiences um, from the actual races. So hopefully you guys have found this kind of useful. <coughs> Um, aren't getting too stressed out because I know I have been recently getting stressed out with these cars with these races <coughs> mainly because of other people that can't drive and purposely plan try and block you second another thing now that I mention it don't crash into people because from what I've seen more damage comes from the person trying to crash into someone than the person actually being crashed into so if you're crashing into people, most likely you're going to take the damage more than the person you're trying to hit. So just don't, just basically just 
be a cool racer. Don't do it. Just don't be that guy, because no one likes that guy. I definitely don't like that guy. Trust me, if you were that guy and I had a mic on, you, 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 you basically, you wouldn't want to hear me. Because it, it wouldn't be nice. But, yeah, if you're that guy, don't be that guy. Or girl. Whatever. But, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this was kind of useful. Don't get stressed out there. Okay? Basically, it doesn't, because it's double money, even if you come second, don't worry too much because it's double money. Yeah, it's not that great money, but it's fun for me. If you're a racer, you're going to be enjoying it. But hopefully you guys enjoyed and this was helpful. Please leave a like. If you did enjoy, that would be greatly appreciated. Leave a comment <coughs> if there's anything that you want me to test um, or talk about. Leave any suggestions on any of the on any reactions if you want me to do them for the reaction part of the channel. Um, and if you haven't already and you like the content, please subscribe. And I will see you next time, whenever that may be, um, with another possible GTA video. Probably next Thursday with the new podium car, which is probably going to be the R88. Um, <coughs> so, we'll see what that is when we get there. Peace out and goodbye.